I have a few drum sets. If you're new to the channel, I like to buy old, used, and neglected drums, fix them up, have some fun with them, make a few videos with them, and then sell them. But I've kind of been slacking on the, the selling part of all that. So I thought before I purge some of these kits, we could take a look at the whole collection. First kit, just because it's already set up, is the DW Design Series Acrylic Kit in Clear. They do make this in some other colors, but I felt like I needed a cliche acrylic clear set, so that's why I got clear. The sizes are 10, 12, 16, and 22 inch bass drum, and it does have a matching 14 by five and a half inch snare. Next. The second DW, I should have mentioned that, I should have mentioned that the acrylic kit was provided by Zounds and this DW Collector's Maple was provided by Sweetwater, but this is a 10, 12, 16, 22 with a matching, uh, what is this, 14 by six and a half inch snare. The wrap on this is, what is it, pale? Blue, pale blue oyster. Pale blue oyster, which I have another kit with the same wrap on it that we'll get to later. But if there's one thing I've learned about DW and posting videos on YouTube, if you, <laughs> this DW texting me right now. If there's one thing I've learned about talking about DW on the internet, if you say one bad thing about them, people will go crazy. Probably true. Next kit. Next up, we have the Donner Acrylic. They offer this in, I think, a white and, or a clear and a red. I decided on red, even though red is my least favorite color. But this is also a 10, 12, 16, 22 with a matching snare. So another thing about having a bunch of kits is like for bass drum muffling, instead of using pillows, I just throw in like a random article of clothing. We have... Is that a Drumeo hoodie? That is a Drumeo hoodie. Sign up using my link down below. What is this, kit number four? This is a Kent Vibratone, or I guess technically it's a Vibratone. Vibratone turned into Kent at some point, as far as I understand. But this kit came to me in really horrible condition, and the only reason I got this kit was a friend of mine got it for free and was like, hey, uh, I need some bass drum spurs. Do you happen to have the ones that I need? Which I did, so he basically gave me the kit. It came as a 14 inch snare, 12 inch rack tom, and then 20, yeah, 20 bass drum. And it sat in my living room for like so long because it was in such bad shape and it didn't have floor time, which I'm pretty sure this configuration never came with a floor time. Apparently floor times weren't a thing back in the day, but uh, Wooden Weather had this made in Japan floor time. So I saw it was orange and it was sparkly. So I was like, oh, it, it might match. And it was a 14. So I grabbed it and made this, you know, kind of Franken kit. And honestly, from a distance, you can't really tell, but obviously the hardware is a little bit different. Mighty fine bass drum head. Number five, this is a Rogers something kit. I'm honestly not too uh, familiar with all the different eras and locations and factories and this and that of Rogers. This was on Craigslist and surprisingly I have a good amount of friends that buy and sell drums and like fix them up. So whenever they see something that they don't want, they'll like send it to me and I'm kind of like forced to buy it. So funny story about this one, I hit the guy up. This kit was like two or 300 bucks. Obviously you can see that it's missing a bunch of parts and rims and heads and tension rods and claws and everything that you kind of need for a drum set. So I hit the guy up, tell him, yeah, I can meet you. So I drive down to the city and I meet in this like 
random intersection park, which is like the size of this room, in the middle of a busy intersection, just this like patch of grass in the middle of the street. This guy is standing there with his drum set stacked up, but the floor tom was missing. And the guy says, oh, uh, some guy came by and offered me a hundred bucks for it. So I sold it to him. I was like, well, why didn't you tell me anything about that? And then he's like, oh, it's all good. You know, I'll, I'll take, you know, 50 bucks off the kit. I'm like, you just said you sold it for a hundred dollars. How are you gonna offer me $50 off? So anyways, I ended up buying it and the only reason I did buy it was I had this floor tom already, which some guy found at a thrift store and uh, he had it on Craigslist for like 20 bucks. So I was like, floor tom for 20 bucks, why not? So now I have this project kit. This is the first of a handful of project kits that I still have and I actually do have the wrap for this kit. I ordered it, but I obviously haven't done anything with it. The Vox Telstar, this is my first weird drum set that kind of kicked the whole weird gear series that I do. But when I heard that they were, you know, reissuing this kit, I was like, yo, I need one of these like so bad. And uh, thankfully I knew someone that was able to get me in contact with someone that would be able to get me one. And originally the, the agreement was I, was, I was just gonna borrow this kit, make a few videos and then, you know, send it back. But thankfully I did such a good job and they were so cool about it. They're like, oh dude, we love the videos just keep the kit. Honestly, I haven't used it since. Uh, I probably should use it a little bit more. It's a 13 by seven and a half inch rack tom, a 16 by I think 15 and a half depth floor tom. The bass drum, I'll have to look it up, but it's like 26 by 18 by 12 by four by 11 or something like that. And then it also has the matching snare which is 14 by five, I think. And honestly, like this snare, I use this a lot on my other kits. This is probably one of my favorite sounding snares. Another interesting fact about this is I still have the box, but the box is a misprint. So they misprinted it. They, I think they double printed it and then they just flipped it inside out. So the bad part was facing the inside and then they reprinted the outside. So it's a very rare box. Number seven, this is an Oriolo Phantom drum set. The story with this kit is I bought it off a dude on Facebook Marketplace. He bought it from someone on Reverb and the person on Reverb was, I think Chris from Hawthorne Drum Shop. He bought the shells from Oriolo and had them drill them out for this hardware and then he basically completed the kit which is why these aren't the regular Oriolo lugs. They have tube lugs on them. These shells are seamless hand spun aluminum shells, meaning that they took like an aluminum disc, put it on a lathe and formed it into this shape. So like the bearing edges and the shell are all one piece, which is pretty insane. This kit was at the time, the most expensive drum set I had bought. And usually I spend not a lot of money on drum sets. This was the first time I ever spent over a thousand dollars on a drum set. I had just finished the Drumio series and I was like, let me celebrate by buying a drum set. Also just as a personal preference, I will say one of my favorite snares to record. I borrowed that and oh, chef's kiss. What's in the bass drum? Oh, you'll recognize what's in the bass drum. I'm actually drawing a blank. What do we use this for? Oh, my fabric for my uh, sound dampeners. This is a made in Japan kit and I actually paid $30 for this kit forever ago. There's actually a video when I first got it and this is back when I didn't really know a lot about different drums and I thought it was a Yamaha because it had a hex tom mount so like oh Yamaha has that it must be a Yamaha but obviously it's not a Yamaha this is a made in Japan kit or a stencil kit MIJ there's a thousand different names 
but it was missing like all the bottom hoops and rims and claws and everything so over the years i kind of just like hodgepodge it back together and I actually had a plan to like make a video like restoring it but i never did because i'm lazy so there's still dirt and grime on it but i still play it and uh i don't think i'll ever sell this kit and this snare didn't come with the kit this is a ludwig pioneer from like the 70s uh which you really don't see that much especially in this finish or this type of wrap and this badge but i got this from a friend who would do a lot of trading with and i really don't remember what i traded for it so yeah officially lost count i really don't care at this point but this is a ludwig standard in a gold strata so this kit i found on a goodwill auction that was local so thankfully they weren't able to ship it which means that less people were bidding on it which means that i could buy it there are a few videos about this kit uh, but when i got it it came as just a 13 inch tom and a 22 inch bass drum and then I made a video saying I was looking for a matching floor tom and thankfully you guys whenever I need help with anything whether it be finding gear or information about stuff you all always are such a, a wealth of knowledge so uh, thankfully one of you guys had one of these floor toms just sitting around that matched this kit so I bought that and then not long after that someone was like oh hey there's this 12 inch for sale so I bought that too so now it's a 12, 13, 16, 22 and uh you know, I've honestly never had this set up as a five piece. I would right now, but I have the wrong mount. Also, this is the kit that I made uh, the Remo CS dot fiber skins on, which a lot of people hated on it, but I think they're kind of cool. This is the first of a handful of Tama kits. This is another weird convoluted story, but I traded a snare drum for two incomplete Tama kits. One was parts of this kit and the other one was a Royal Pewter Imperial Star that was missing the Rack Tom. And I did plan on keeping the other kit and then selling this one, but I completed the other one and sold it and then for this kit i bought another incomplete kit that matched and then kind of combined the two and then i added on even more so this started as a 12 16 22 and then my buddy jabron he found this 18 inch floor tom on facebook i think so i bought that and then not long after that someone was like oh hey i have a matching 10 inch tom i was like yes i need that because 10 inches are pretty rare to find so now this kit is a 10 12 16 18 22 i really had no plans of first of all even keeping this kit when i first got it let alone making it this big and as far as sound goes this this one is also up there like if i had to play one kit that was like my sound It'll probably be this kid. I'm looking at I'm looking at it from here. I'm like, that's fiber. Well, this is like the what do they call it? I don't know what Tama calls it, but Ludwig calls it like the granitone. Yeah. Uh, or Zola. That's what it's called, I think. It's a Zola coating. As far as I know, it's just to kind of like hide the imperfections of the ugly wood on the inside on the lower grade drums. Does it sound any better? I really have no idea. Another thing, they have the skinny re-rings which i think are these and then the bass drum has no re-rings and then i think they also have like the fat re-rings which i think the 12 is a fat re-ring so this kit isn't technically correct but it's good enough as long as it sounds good exactly
Don't hire Bryce as a drum tech. These angles oh, are... Oh, hold on there, sport. <laughs> <laughs> this kit. This is a Tama Superstar from the 80s, I think. This is the Super maple finish even though these are all birch shells which i still don't understand i bought this kit off craigslist for like 500 bucks it came as a 12 22 and 16 but i made a video about this kit because this was one of my like my dream kits my excaliburs yeah so i like really as as soon as i started playing drums and like i'll look through the old tama catalogs and i saw the old superstars and something about them just looked so cool something about them was just like Yes, I need one of those. But I finally found one. Actually, my buddy Eric saw it on Craigslist and was like, yo, you need to buy this. And this is the second farthest I've drove for a kit. The first farthest I drove to Maryland for a bass drum, of all things. That was like a three-hour drive. This was like a one-hour drive, which doesn't sound like a lot, but for me, I really hate driving to buy stuff. But for this kit, it was totally worth it. So I made the video about this kit, and then sometime later, someone was like, oh, hey, I have a 18-inch floor tom that matches do you want it i was like uh of course i do wasn't this the uh that 18 the birth of the 18 inch floor tom gang <laughs> it was which surprisingly like i'm not a huge fan of 18 inch floor toms uh even though i have one for this kit as well as that imperial star it's a huge drum i know ludwig made like 20 inch floor toms but uh this 18 is definitely a beast my issue with them is I tune my 16s as low as they can go. So to tune this lower than that is kind of hard. So if anything, maybe I should tune this one higher and flip them or something. I don't really know. I also do have a matching Superstar Snare 14 by six and a half. This thing is a freaking beast and probably one of my favorite snares. If I'm ever in doubt, I'll just grab this one. Considering Birch is normally pretty light, like this, look, we talk about DW hardware. That snare weighs just as much as any DW snare like I've ever, I've ever worked with. <laughs> the thing is a unit. The Fiber Star. I honestly don't play this kit enough. There's something about this kit and the yellow, it just, it's special. Big mustard. <laughs> Big mustard. <laughs> so this is a Tama Fiber Star. It has fiberglass shells. If you want to zoom in on, I guess, the bass drum shell. Or actually here. Actually, I'm stupid. Actual fiberglass. <laughs> <laughs> so this kit came as a 12, 13, 16, 22 and i obviously rewrapped it i didn't do this drum though i do have the wrap for it but i was in such a hurry to get it done for the video that i didn't do the 13 because it was missing a bunch of the lugs but i do have a bunch of lugs now so i might rewrap this at some point this kit i got from the same guy i got the kent drum set from but he had this on craigslist for a while and like no one wanted it and obviously like the, the whole drum set was in like this condition were like duct taped together and missing parts and the legs were wrong and this and that. He was like, hey, no one's buying this kit. I'll sell it to you for a killer deal. So I named a price and uh, obviously I bought it. I rewrapped it. It was, no, it wasn't missing the bass drum hoops, but I did get new hoops for it because I felt like black, glossy black wooden hoops would look better. And also I added the inlay on those. So it is a pretty cool looking kit, especially if you like yellow drum sets. Something about yellow drum sets I just love, and uh, this was part of the reason why. But the love for that started before this one, so this was the first that solidified that love. Kit, I actually don't think I've ever showed on my channel. I mean, you might have seen it, but I've never really talked about it, I guess. But this is a Ludwig Club date, uh, 12, 20. Uh, this floor tom isn't original. This is like a standard floor tom based on the lugs. But you can see it has been rewrapped at some point. 
at least based on these staples. And also, it does have the matching uh, Jazz Fest snare, which is missing part of the ramp. I've debated if I should fix this somehow or just leave it as is because it does, I guess, tell some sort of a story. I got this kit from an old student's mother who got it from her jazz professor back in the day. Basically, just sitting around for forever and they didn't really have a use for it. And she asked if I could, you know, take it and fix it up. The main thing was the floor time. But I'm thinking at this point, I'm just gonna replace the, uh, the standard lugs with the classic lugs and have it look somewhat correct. I used to have a, uh, it was like a 14 by 12, like marching snare. That was a Ludwig that had the like double ended lugs that would have like matched the look a little bit. Obviously the, the size would be wrong, but uh, finding a wrap that matches is basically impossible because over the years, these age and look totally different. So to buy a new wrap, it'll look completely wrong. And then uh, the idea is to donate the kit once that's done. Inside of this base drum, we have a 1960s pillow, it looks like, or comforter. Yeah, looks like a pillow. That is a sad looking pillow. This kit is a Fibes brand. So it's made out of fiberglass and is very heavy. This kit came as a 12, 13, 16, 22. I've played this on my channel a couple times. I've never used the 13 though, because I don't like 13s. And then the snare is also matching. Uh, these are the, the Martins era fibes. So that means that the shells are like a solid chunk of fiberglass and then they cut the edges on them. The previous era, they like formed the fiberglass into the, the bearing edge shape, which apparently suck but apparently these are the good ones. But the snare didn't come with a kit. Uh, a viewer saw that I had this kit and said that he had a matching snare, but not gonna lie, I'm not a huge fan of this snare, which is why I don't play it and it was in the two cell pile upstairs. Also, the mechanism was missing, so I had to flip it or switch it out with a uh, an indie trainer as well as a butt plate. This kit I got from Guitar Center of all places. I usually don't, well, that's a lie. I used to not really buy from, you know, the, the big box stores because the prices and everything, but I don't know, my friend was gonna buy it and he decided not to because he's a dork and said that that was too ugly. So I was like, that doesn't bother me, let me buy it. But this kit is up there as far as sound. This is probably in my top five kits, but the wrap is a little bit too much and doesn't really look good on camera and looks horrible in thumbnails, so I avoid chrome drums usually now. But still, it sounds incredible and uh, it's a great sounding kit. And also, I'm pretty sure this is the only drum set I have that has Evan's heads on it. Mm-hmm. Next up, this is another Donner kit, but this one's uh, a little bit weird. It has built-in pads on it, so you can play it like a normal drum set. If you twist this, it brings the pad up. And now you have a practice pad kit. There's a hoodie in this one. Plain old blue hoodie. I'm gonna leave this one out, actually. That looks too new. This is a Pearl Session Studio Select in Ice Blue Oyster 10, 12, 14, 16, 22. And uh, this kit was provided to me by Zounds. You might remember they sent me two of these kits, the exact same kits. And I did a, a video comparing tuning with my ear and then tuning just by feel. And I uh, got some interesting results with that. Then you might remember I use this kit to like copy Mike Mangini's tuning. I spent a lot of time dialing in those drums to get them to sound really good. <laughs> but then right after that, I did the cheapest Amazon drum heads and now they sound not very good. So the 10 inch is still the good tuning. It's kind of flattened out a little bit.
Oh, we got a couple shirts in here, I think. This uh, was a birthday present for my mom. Shout out mom. R, mama R. Somehow it ended up in the space room. I'll probably leave this one out. This is another project kit of sorts. I'm pretty sure it's a made in Japan kit. Nothing too fancy about this or special about it. It was on Facebook for like a hundred bucks, so I bought it. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's been rewrapped because there's like holes for like the air vent and tom mounts on the floor tom that are, they're not there, but there's holes in the drums. And also like on the inside of the drum, all the screws are painted. So someone painted the inside of everything. But I did use the bass drum recently for the piano reverb hack thing. But other than that, I haven't really done anything with it. So on the list to do one day. So this is the impact drum set. And in that video, I said, if I got 10,000 likes, I was going to restore it, which by the time this video goes out, if you go onto my community tab, there's a poll where you can vote on the wrap and the hardware color scheme. So uh, check that out. But the cool thing about this drum set, if you saw that video, it is like really big, but everything is packed into this one tom. So we have, do it look like I came out of space balls? <laughs> I was gonna say you look like one of the knights from a, uh, uh, Monty Python. Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, is this is a 10 inch. I think this is an eight. This is a 10 and then this is a 14, I think. But these are, uh, what are these? These are fiberglass shells. These shells are like really thin compared to all of the other fiberglass drums I have. And even though they're bigger with this like giant scoop, they are actually lighter. People are saying that I should wrap this as like Bender from Futurama. <laughs> or that these were very sus looking drums. And then there's uh, the boring bass drum. Not exciting. Here we have another sad looking drum set. I've talked about this on my channel before. This is an old uh, Gretsch Progressive Jazz, I'm pretty sure. So 12, 14, 20. As you can see, it's missing a bunch of parts and it's been spray painted black. And uh, yeah, it's pretty sad looking. I call it the ravioli kit, even though it's a, a beefaroni tom. But this was made by a friend of mine and this did kind of go viral. At least his post did. I was hoping mine did, but they, they didn't. <laughs> He posted this on Instagram and all the different drum forums and uh, kind of blew up. So uh, this is a, I think it's a, a 13 inch Tom, like 13 by freaking 12, but it has a beefaroni wrap on it. And we got the sweet pea bass drum, some Campbell's tomato soup, and then the, uh, the bumblebee tuna snare, which actually this snare with this head, this is just like a cheap steel uh, shell, but it actually sounds pretty good with this clear head on it. And also I lied, I'm pretty sure there are Evans heads. Yeah. There are. Old man Bob who made this, he's an Evans guy and uh, he put Evans heads on it, but then I took them off, at least on the batter. Are these expired by now? Here we have another club date. This one is actually usable. I've used this in one or two videos at this point. It's not the most interesting because it's just plain old black. This thing, it's a killer sounding kit. I bought it from a dude on Craigslist. And this guy also had, I'm gonna get so much hate for this, but whatever the kit that Ringo Starr played, the Ludwig Super Classic in Oyster Black Pearl. And uh, it was a really good deal actually. And uh, I hit the guy up and apparently someone drove down from like Delaware to buy it. So uh, I didn't get it. 
But a few weeks later, he posted this and I did get it. But it's a club date, so it's 12 by eight, 20 by 14, and 14 by 14. And this kit would probably be in my top five favorite kits, at least based on sound. Also, I just remembered when I went to pick it up, he was showing me the kit. He was like messing with the floor time. He lost one of the tension rod washers and it like fell under the rug or something. <laughs> and I was like, dude, it's good. Don't worry about it. But he spent like 30 minutes trying to find this a stupid washer. That washer really completed this kit, even though these rims aren't original because this is nickel hardware. These rims aren't. These are chrome. Same with the bass drum claws and hoops, or not hoops, the uh, tension rods. And yet another Fibes. This is literally the exact same kit as the other one, except it's black. <laughs> On to the next one. This is another Gretsch. It's uh, not as bad shape as the other one, but again, the only reason I got this one was it was a really good deal, but it is missing the floor tom. We got these really, really special uh, tension rods on there. You ever seen anything like that? So this is another kit I'll probably end up getting rid of. I've tried to find a floor tom, but it's basically impossible without spending like $4,000. So probably get rid of this kit. You interested, Bryce? No. Nope. Speaking of Gretsch and Bryce, we got to go to Bryce's because my other Gretsch is at his house. Sorry for the janky footage, but this is either a 1978 or 1979 Gretsch stop sign badge. This kit is a beast. Bryce is borrowing it at the moment as well as my 14x8 Ludwig snare. But I got this kit from Sam Ash. It needs some work, nothing too major, but I was just tired of looking at those other Gretches in pieces. So I got this mainly because I can make a video about it, but also to officially check out a vintage Gretch. These setups are looking better and better as we go. So this is a Tama Royal Star, which is like a, or was like an entry level kit. But this one's kind of cool because it has this fancy wood grain pattern on it. And uh, bought this from a friend in New York. He shipped it down. The only reason I really bought it was there were some scratches on the finish. And I wanted to, you know, try my hand at finish retouching, which is something I've never really done. And honestly, they weren't in that bad of shape. And the stuff I did wasn't that advanced. But I think they came out pretty good. But this is a 12, 13, 16, 22. And uh, as far as bass drum sounds go, this is probably top two is there anything inside of it oh man i'm running out of clothes i need more This is a Yamaha 5000 series. I call this the Yamatron. And surprisingly, this kit is also in the top five as far as sound goes. Bought this from a friend. I honestly don't remember what I paid for it. And the only reason I bought it was because it looks kind of funky. It really didn't need any work done to it, but I did switch out the bass drum inlay so that they were chrome. This little thing, I had to chromify that. And also this was used in a movie, which I don't remember what movie. And that is the Yamatron. Yeah, I got the horns looking right at me. Talking to that one. Like the <laughs> video and subscribe. Sorry, Trap, could you repeat that? <laughs> Final kit. Actually, not really. There is one more that isn't worth talking about. It's a cheap uh, beginner drum set, the one I paid a hundred bucks for. This is a North drum set, the old Dr. Seuss Whoville kit. I bought this because I could. It's honestly like a really good sounding kit. It's like the biggest pain in the ass to set up, which is why it's not set up right now. I really don't know what I want to do with this kit. I saw a picture of someone that had a North kit that had like flames painted on it. I think that'd be really sick, but I don't know anyone that 
can paint while you're shaking your head. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not putting flames. We're not Guy Fieri. Here, dude, so. Matt, do flames on the inside of this thing? That's not going to happen, Chief. Holy crap, that's a lot of kits. I did forget the kids drum set, the most famous drum set on my channel. 29 drum sets, but actually inside of these boxes is another weird and special kit. So a nice even 30. But that is a video for another day. So make sure you subscribe.